I'm Tom Oliterno. I'm the Vice Dean of the Eisenberg School, and it really gives me a great pleasure to welcome you tonight to this Minute Pitch competition. This is the first event in a four-event series that culminates in the Innovation Challenge here on campus. Uh, and the Innovation Challenge is in its 12th year here on campus, and so it's very exciting to see this program develop over time. Uh, of the four events leading up to the Innovation Challenge, I have to say, I think this one may be my favorite. Um, because tonight you're going to hear uh, 23 uh, individuals and teams uh, take a swing for it, right? You know, take a swing. Come up with an idea, right? And, you know, every, one, every company we know began at this moment with an idea, right? Whether it's Google or Uber or the company that won last year's Innovation Challenge, uh, Clarity. They all began at this moment with an idea. And so what you see here tonight is the beginning of this wonderful entrepreneurial process that, uh, that we certainly support here uh, at UMass and we celebrate with this competition. The, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about this. As I mentioned, this is the 12th uh, instance of the Innovation Challenge here on campus. Um, for the last few years, this, uh, this initiative, this uh, program, has been um, overseen by the uh, Birth Hume Center at the Eisenberg School of Management, um, and we are delighted to do that. The uh, Birth Hume Center was started with a very generous gift from uh, Doug and Diane Birth Hume uh, in 2014. Uh, and and I, I want to note that because really this event, the awards that you will uh, see or the, the, the prizes that you'll see given tonight, this would not be possible without the very generous uh, philanthropic support of the Berthumes and uh, as you'll hear in a moment, a couple other folks and organizations tonight. So I really want to thank our sponsors. In fact, I, I know I'm going out of order here, Burton, but I'm going to do it right now. I want to first thank uh, EY. Uh, Ernst Young, the uh, accounting firm, who's been very generous in their support of uh, the Eisenberg School and the Birth Hume Center. Um, we have a, a representative from I, uh, EY here on the panel. I'll introduce him in a moment. And then also um, uh, Bud Robertson, uh, Eisenberg Class of 72, who this year has stepped forward with a very generous gift in support of this particular initiative. And so um, one, of, uh, one or more of the companies that you hear tonight will, I have no doubt, be uh, phenomenally successful, and I look forward to, uh, in the future, thanking you for your support uh, of a future instance of the, uh, of the Innovation Challenge here. Um, the, the mission of the center, the vision of this center, is to provide uh, support and encourage entrepreneurship across the UMass campus. And in fact, tonight, I'm really excited to, hear, to tell you that 62% of the uh, companies that you're here tonight, the ideas that you're here tonight, are in fact from schools, from not the Eisenberg School. And this gives me, uh, I'm, I'm delighted about this, because this is really what we want. We want to create a culture of innovation and, uh, and entrepreneurship across the campus. So tonight, we have ideas coming from um, uh, the College of Natural Sciences, engineering, uh, school of behavioral sciences, computer sciences, nurses, BDIC, which is the bachelor degree in individual concentration, people who are creating their own innovative concentrations. And so a great representation of students tonight uh, pitching ideas. It's very exciting. Um, I've already thanked the sponsors. I'd like to take a moment now to thank our judges. Um, I'm going to go right down the, the panel here. Our first judge is uh, Jay Leonard. He's the director of Bearings, and he's the co-head of the Springfield Venture Fund. And he's also the, uh, the founder, the co-founder of the Valley Venture Mentors. He's also uh, an alum of the Eisenberg uh, MBA program. And uh, the winning company tonight, uh, I hope you heard that second thing, he's the co-head of the Springfield Venture Fund. So uh, thanks, Jay. Our second uh, judge tonight is uh, Matt Bannister. Matt is the first vice president of marketing and innovation at People's Bank. Also an alum uh, and uh, has been very helpful in the past. Judge last year's the Innovation Challenge. It's great to have you back. Um, Third is Kent Whitney. Kent is a retired president from Militech, uh, also an alum, uh, and has last summer dedicated uh, his time to mentoring one of the companies in the Accelerator. Last year, the Birth Hume Center launched a, um, an Accelerator program that ran over the summer, and uh, certainly the winner of the Innovation Challenge last year, and how many of the other teams in the Accelerator were from the Innovation Challenge last year? All three of them? Okay, so all of the companies that participated in last summer's Accelerator participated in the Innovation Challenge last year, continuing developing their ideas. Uh, and Kent was a wonderful uh, mentor to, um, to one of those companies. Uh, Clarity, the company I mentioned before. Fourth, uh, uh, our friend from uh, EY, Kyle Patterson. Um, uh, Kyle is also an undergrad uh, alum, uh, accounting major here, um, and now works uh, at EY in Boston. Uh, EY has been very generous in supporting the Eisenberg School um, and the Birth Hume Center as 
creating a, uh, giving us a gold sponsorship in the Entrepreneur of the Year competition. So thank you to EY for your support. And uh, last but certainly not least, my good friend Diane Doherty at the end of the table. Diane is a community partner at the Doherty Group. Um, she was a, a past senior advisor uh, for the S SBDC, the uh, Small Business Development um, Commission, uh, which is, uh, 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 lives within the Eisenberg School as well. She's a community champion for entrepreneurship in the Valley. Uh, if you know entrepreneurship in the Valley, you know Diane's name. So we have a wonderful panel of judges tonight. I want to thank you all, and please join me in thanking them. So now I'm going to hand over the, the mic and the podium to Burton Cowden. Burton is the uh, Director of New Venture Development for the Birth Hume Center. Uh, Burton uh, is the, really the person who provides the great leadership that makes the, uh, the Innovation Challenge happen here on campus. And so we're, uh, we're very grateful to Burton. And Burton's going to walk us through the, uh, the rules of engagement for this evening. So thank you very much. All right, before the fun starts, um, Tom alluded to this, but uh, if we get to the next slide, there's a whole series here, and I'm a professor, so I don't usually talk with these, and I walk. Um, there's a whole series of the minute of the innovation challenge. So this is kind of our easiest jumping in point for the ventures. So again, these are gonna be fresh ideas to people already have traction. So those in the audience, please have friendly eyes, right? It's not natural to want to come and speak in front of you all and have this idea that I have and put myself out there, right? So uh, try to remember those things while you're watching these and be encouraging, right? Um, once we progress, we have the seed pitch coming up. So those in the audience that want to participate, the, the deadline is November 13th. And that will be a closed room. You audience, you won't be able to see that, unfortunately, but uh, some awesome things will be occurring. 15 teams will get to go into that closed room and they'll get five minutes with a panel of judges like tonight and then 10 minutes of Q&A and we really grill them and make them sweat and cry and, all, and there's bloodshed actually. Um, thank you for laughing, it's not, <laughs> not a somber event. Um, and so, uh, at that, that night, uh, we'll, again, donor base will give up to $15,000 uh, to the teams that uh, deserve that. From there, we go to the semifinals where we, again, have a closed session. And uh, no money is awarded that night, but we pick the top five to seven teams to go to the finals, which is in April. And uh, at that point, uh, you will have uh, audience uh, participation again a panel of judges, and we will be giving up to $65,000 that night. So we keep ramping up throughout the semester, uh, and we're just starting the fun tonight. Sound good? All right. So here's what's going down tonight. We have a total of 23 pitches. Uh, each gets 60 seconds. Those will go by quick. There's no Q&A the, from the judges at that point. They have a lot to kind of think about in those 60 seconds, and we move on to the next one. Uh, at that point, we'll have a brief intermission, uh, take advantage of the open bar, there's food, and uh, we will get the scoring to know what are the top five teams here tonight. From that, we'll reconvene. They will get, the top five teams will then get two minutes to pitch, and then the panel will get three minutes of Q&A. From that, they'll deliberate, and first place gets $1,000, second place gets $750, third place gets $500. Also, uh, if you registered, we have an audience choice award, uh, so you should have gotten that link in the email today. If you registered, you can pick a, uh, your own favorite, and that audience choice award will get $250. Sound great? All right, let's work the room. So my first 10 pitches, come up here and start lining up in order. My MBAs, come and line up as well. What's unique about the minute pitch is as soon as they're done with their 60 seconds, they get an MBA fellow that will take them out into the hall and give them real-time feedback based on their pitch. Hopefully they can incorporate that kind of feedback in the time that uh, if they make it to the two-minute pitch. All right, those that are beyond the top ten, 
you know, number one goes, 11 start filling in. Hopefully you know your math and your numbers and uh, we'll all be uh, copacetic. Is everybody strapped in? We're gonna go pretty quick here. All right. Do we have our timer? <coughs> Judges, we're feeling confident. We got the quick pen going. All right, let's switch screens. All right, number one, easy life. What's up, everyone? Who here has a house key? Who has a U card? Pretty much everyone, right? Then you know how much of a pain it is. What do you do when you lose it? Who can you trust with it? Well, with Easy Lock, you can open your door with just your face. Right, so our, our lock works in three different ways. So it can either recognize your face with a camera and unlock the door that way. Um, you can use a mobile app to unlock the door from your phone or lock the door. Or uh, it can sense your location as you get close to your door and you can set it to unlock as you walk up to it. Um, right now, our prototype is going to be installed on top of the deadbolt, so it takes like no installation inside of the door, easy to set up, and it costs about $50 to make right now, but that's just the first one. It's going to go down from there. Right. By 2024, the lock market is going to reach $25 billion, and we think we can sell this lock for $50 each. It's grown 75% every year, and it's not something you're going to want to miss out on. Thank you very much. My name is George Peters. When I came to UMass, I felt pressure from my peers in regards to style and clothing. I felt pressure to conform to expectations that didn't define who I was. I turned this pressure into a passion in creating something that defined the ordinary and allowed me to express myself through my clothing. I met my partner Chris Ray in Italy. We shared the same vision, to bring the European streetwear style that we fell in love with back to the East Coast and sell it at affordable price. With the dream in mind, we each took out $300 and bought our first order of 50 shirts, sold them, went on to the next order, and sold those. We started to expand our products from hats to hoodies to t-shirts to shorts. We noticed people buying into the lifestyle behind the brand. After starting with $600 between the two of us, we have done $13,000 in sales and over the past nine months with no external investment. With an, with an investment from you, we believe that we can expand our brand on the e-commerce market and increase our sales. Defy the Ordinary began as an idea, grew into a clothing line, and morphed into a lifestyle. Thank you, and this is George Ray. Go grab an MBA. Number three, keep up. Are we facing all right? Yeah. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Adish, and I'm one of the co-founders of Keep Up. As a college student, you take four to six classes a semester. Every class uses two or three different platforms for homework and course management. Students spend 10 to 20 minutes a day going through every platform for every class, just trying to figure out what homework's coming up and not actually doing the homework. And at the end of it all, you're still anxious asking yourself, am I forgetting something? Keep Up is a shared calendar application that solves this problem. Users such as professors can sign up, create a public calendar with a unique username, post all their deadlines on there once, and users such as students can follow calendars for every single class they're taking. And all your deadlines will be in one place in chronological order without you having to try and remember it or manually enter it. We're working on a prototype right now and expecting a launch towards the end of November. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Zan Sh Oh, I saw the timer going. I was like... Give him those two seconds. 
Number four, Nutrigenics. All right. Hey, everyone. My name is Zan Sheikh. I'm a co-founder of Nutrigenics, where we are on a mission to streamline personalized healthcare. You see, about three years ago, I got really into fitness, and I realized that over 70% of whether or not you get results or not has to do with your diet and nutrition. And so after getting into the nutrition space a little bit, I realized that there are three main issues. Firstly, total overload of information, tons of pseudoscience. Second, if you go ahead and get a nutritionist, you realize that they give you cookie cutter programs that are not, not dialed in to how your body actually works. Third, supplements and vitamins all affect people differently. So after figuring out that these are really big problems, my team and I went ahead and we embarked on this journey to access the power of your genetic makeup and pair you with a nutritionist uh, over the web to be able to give you personalized uh, food, supplement, and vitamin recommendations. We've been fortunate enough to meet with a PhD of microbiology and an industry leader with over 30 plus experience in the fitness industry. We know that they made the right decision with working us, with us. We know that you will too. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Elvan. I'm the co-founder of B-Squared Bug Bites. The United Nations announced that cattle farts a lot. The livestock industry alone is producing more greenhouse gas emissions than transport. And um, it takes about 2,000 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. So how are health and environmental conscious foodies and millennials supposed to get their protein without hitting the local burger? Here comes us, B squared bug bites. We are producing high protein, nutrient dense protein bars and chips that are very healthy for you and they're accommodating to, their, to your busy lives. Um, <coughs> Insect and they are made with insect protein powder. Um, we are targeting a four billion dollar market, and it's increasing every year, and it's projected to increase in the next five years. Thank you. Managing a Greek organization is now harder than ever. Fraternities and sororities are under pressure to meet community and academic st standards, yet chapter executives struggle to effectively manage their members and to incentivize participation for events that improve their standings. My name is Ray, and I'm here to talk about Greek Wizard, an application aimed to simplify the responsibility in running a Greek organization. Greek Wizard works by managing events. It creates a single platform for chapter communications, automatically tracks attendance, and allows chapter le leaders to easily see the performance of each individual in their chapter. Disciplinary action can be taken directly from the app by alerting members which events and benefits they are eligible for, allowing the executive committees to set the bar without personal relationships getting in the way. There are over 750,000 people in Greek chapters across the country, making this a big market but a niche one at the same time. Other applications on the market provide similar tools, but Greek Wizard is the very first one to promise a reliable system of incentivization. marketing and psychology major and this is my partner Leah, a nursing major. Our product CardiQ is a wearable heart attack detection system that alerts family members and healthcare providers of a wearer's imminent attack, creating a healthcare safety system for people at risk. I discovered the undeniable need for CardiQ when my own grandfather collapsed on the floor of the mall. He, like 50% of heart attack victims, did not realize he was experiencing an attack and did not know to call for help. 
If he had been wearing CardiQ, the CardiQ app would have alerted his entire family and healthcare providers at the first sign of cardiac distress, an entire four hours before he collapsed. In those crucial moments, he could have received the medical attention that would have saved his life. One in every three Americans will die of a heart attack. Look to your right. Look to your left. I wouldn't take those chances, would you? <laughs> Should I be like holding this and waving it around? Okay. You did the Hulk Prize, right? You judged for the Hulk Prize or you helped organize that? All right, number eight, Ox. Okay, cool. uh, hi, everyone. My name is Sean. I'm a computer science major. And my name is Dan. I'm an OIM major. And tonight, we're extremely excited to present to you Ox, which is a mobile party management system. So really quick, and don't look at my black eye too hard, I want to ask, who here has ever been to a crazy event or party that just seemed out of control and just did not seem like it was cohesive? Show of hands. No, you were at my house this past weekend? Okay. So what we envision for Aux is an a entire integrated interface for both party hosts and party goers to sort of connect and have a better overall experience. We want to integrate and crowdsource playlists and music suggestions. We want to have people be able to check into the event so that you don't need to get bounced if you don't have a text, for example. And we want to basically make sure that everyone at the party and the party host can have a solid and reliable system for having that. The apps in the space exist, but the main difference that we're attempting to do is integrate with the existing workflow, not replace it. Thank you very Thank you much. Hi, my name is Roy. Um, I founded Wes, and we make software solutions for legal marijuana dispensaries. Contrary to popular belief, it actually sucks to sell legal cannabis. Um, my friend Liz, who I met in California, one of 30 marijuana business owners uh, that I met out there, she can't get a bank account for her business. She can't take credit cards or debit cards. Patients that come to her with debilitating medical symptoms, she recommends strains based on personal experience and word of mouth. Um, on top of that, she has to track and report every single one of those sales to the state. So Wes can definitely help her with an electronic point of sale, a blockchain backend for tracking reporting, and a data analysis package to help her sort of pick what strains and figure out what she needs for inventory. Um, so yeah, help me help Liz. Um, <laughs> and we, we have uh, a large market, a uh, quarter billion by 2020. So. Thank you very much. How you doing? Uh, my name is Greg. The company I'm representing is Muna Istanbul. So when I was studying abroad, I met a Turkish friend and he had owned a Turkish handmade shoe company and it specialized in fashion forward minded business casual footwear anywhere from loafers to boots. And so when I saw him, I was like, wow, dude, these are really nice. And so when I looked at him, I was like, how much? Knowing that an Italian shoe is around about similar quality, around $300. And he's like, I could give it to you for 70. And I was like, all right, so that's, at that moment, I began to saw the potential of bringing it to the U.S. market. And then he began to tell me how well they've done. They've already been recognized by the Vogue. They've sold over a 1,000. They've been killing it. And um, they just haven't been focused on the U.S. market. And he would like me to be the exclusive seller of this product and be um, the face behind the product and the brand. So I started to show him around, around here, and I've got nothing but good feedback. And I noticed I have the possibility to supply top-quality 
handmade shoes for half the price. So essentially, the train's coming, it's just a matter of when. Thank you very much. to get a waiter to come and get you some more water, some serviettes, maybe get some more orders, but the waiter's really busy and you don't really want to be that guy that's like, excuse me, waiter, y you don't want to be that guy. So I came up with a very interesting app. You walk in with your phone in your hand with the barcode of your personal life's barcode. They scan you and they add you to one of the tables. When you need any sort of help whatsoever, you simply press a button and boom, your table lights up on their iPad device, their computer, anything that it integrates with, and the waiter will know to come over. This will make restaurants really, really easy in utilizing manpower and it would, like, it would make customers a lot more satisfied and for such a cheap price. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is, name is Monarch. Uh, I'd like to begin by saying that uh, rural immobility hinders economic development. This issue has impacted millions of people in India, in the rural regions of India, by limiting access to education, healthcare, and employment. Uh, we want to empower these people by providing a solution which will uh, recreate the existing transportation architecture and also harness the power of cell phones. Think of it as Uber for rural India, but what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, build a transportation system which will utilize multiple modes of transport, like auto rickshaws, motorcycles, or buses. And I believe we have a good team because uh, it consists of a mechanical engineer, a computer science major, a finance major. So I believe that uh, these skills will not only help us in building the required technology, but it will also help us in transitioning from the idea phase to the revenue generation phase. I'd also like to mention that, that I have previously founded two companies, and I've also successfully exited one of them. So uh, I think we have the ne network required for... Thank you. Hi everyone, so I'm Max, I'm the founder of TAG. These days, pretty much everyone has about a million different social networking platforms. You got your Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and they all come together to form this social identity that we all have on the internet. When I came to college, in those first weeks when I was meeting a million different people every day, I found that there's this disconnect from meeting someone in real life and those digital lives that we have on the internet connecting with each other. And the best you can hope for is that in the moment you exchange phone numbers and you go home, someone friends the other one on Facebook, it ends up being this long and pretty awkward process. So I built Tag. Tag is a mobile app that allows users, when they meet in real life, to instantly connect on all of their social networking platforms by touching phones. The app uses Bluetooth technology to handle this, and it, it instantly connects you and exchanges your phone numbers. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right. Ready? All right, 15, Modo. 
Hi everyone, so I'm Chris, this is Adam and Pedro. So according to Forbes, virtual reality is projected to become a $45 billion industry by the year 2025. And we plan to jumpstart commercial use VR in a already working model, which is a gym. We plan to use fitness as a stepping stone to showcase the uh, capabilities of virtual reality to a wide demographic of people. So Moto is a team of doers. So I'm gonna tell you what we have done already. So we've already purchased in the past 60 days, we've done all this. We've purchased an existing gym. Uh, since October 1st, we've added over 175 members to our gym. And next week, we're going to meet with the leading virtual reality fitness software company in Cambridge. In November, we'll be launching our first virtual reality setup in the fitness world. Virtual reality is the future. You see it uh, growing uh, both in the business space and the residential space. We're going to show you how you can use it. All right, 16, talent pool. Hi, I'm Duke. I'm Jack, and we're down for All right, so we have a friend who wrote an entire album, right? But he couldn't find a vocalist. He searched for an entire year to find this person. He ended up having to join a club with like-minded individuals in order to find a singer. His only other option would have been to learn to do the skill himself, but both of these variants seem like a huge waste of time. And that's where Talentful comes in. Talentful is a networking site and a community designed to connect creatively geared individuals in pursuit of their goals. And once you've completed that project, you can go back to the community to promote, to share, to even sell what you've done. If you don't have something yourself to work on, you can join someone else's endeavors and help them. And now Talentful isn't exclusively related to music. We can help you complete any creative idea you have. If you need help with graphic design, with video and film editing, or help with your YouTube channel, even if you need to simply rent equipment, come and join our community and we can find you that help. Thank you. Thank you. Number 17, Knaves. Hi, my name is Amir, and we are representing a team of engineering PhDs and professors of UMass. A few years ago, we missed Steve Jobs because of pancreatic cancer. This cancer has the highest mortality rate between the others. And the only reason of that, it doesn't have any early symptoms. After two years of research, we developed a very unique platform to diagnose the pancreatic cancer in the earlier stage. The blood is a treasure trove of information about the function of body, and we just need one droplet of your blood to tell you if you are okay or you need to see a doctor. The existing diagnosis platforms cost $6,000 versus our technique, which costs only 20 bucks. So everyone can easily afford it. Imagine how was the world if we, if we still had Steve Jobs alive, or so many others living with their families and friends. Thank you. Alright, hi guys, I'm John and I've been studying Chinese now for seven years and I have experience living and working in China. Uh, in this time I've realized that the majority of expats and the more than 40 million global Chinese language learners uh, face several problems. The first is that there's a huge difference between the expectations versus the reality of living and working in China. And the second is the extreme unnaturalness that comes from learning Chinese through the current resources available. I want to change this. Um, uh, Better Lao aims to be the premier online destination for um, China-related career advice, um, for how we personalize Chinese language learning materials, and uh, real expat advice on how to thrive in China. In short, Better Lao will bring a, a human element that will help to take expats' careers to the next level and help uh, create happier lives for expats currently living in China. Thanks. All right, 
right, 19, Turnaway. Good evening, everyone. My name is Austin. I'm the CEO of Turnaway LLC, the online travel bank that offers customers up to a 25% match on their savings towards travel. Here's how it works. Jane wants to plan a vacation for her family. She goes on turnaway.com and searches for the perfect trip like she would on a Priceline or an Expedia. However, like most people, Jane doesn't just have a couple thousand dollars ready to book her trip. She has to save towards it, which is extremely difficult for most people. So instead, she saves her trip to her account on Turnaway and begins saving towards it uh, and able to monitor prices as they uh, fluctuate real time. As she saves towards it, at certain savings benchmarks, we will match her up to 25%, helping her get to her savings goal faster and giving her a little extra moolah for those first class tickets she wants. Uh, we can afford this by generating interest on her savings while also getting industry standard commissions. Thank you. Hi everyone, <clears throat> I'm Alex, I'm a PhD student at UMass, I'm the founder of New Ventures, and my mission is to convert idle patents into executed licenses. Right now, universities own about 100,000 patents in total, but 80% of them are never brought to market. Professors and universities just don't have enough time to focus on commercializing all their patents. There's some exceptions, Stanford, NYU, they make hundreds of millions per year on their licensing deals. The difference is that these schools perform extensive market research, and they assemble teams of subject matter experts and combine them with business developers to license their patents. Well, New Ventures, we provide that market research. We assemble those required teams, and we create a platform for the universities, as well as inventors and New Ventures to make a profit while licensing these unused patents in a $30 billion per year market. Thank you. All right, number 21, crypto investments. Hi, I'm Ryan Murphy. And I'm George Ryan and we're your link to the world of cryptocurrency investing. Cryptocurrencies are a very promising new form of investment. And to evidence this, last December, the market cap was 17.6 billion. Today, it's over $165 billion. The problem is that cryptocurrency investing is very confusing and really, really time consuming. To combat this, we manage your money for you. We take the time and the knowledge and take our clients' investments and put them in the most relevant cryptocurrency to get them the maximum return on investment. Just over the past six months, we have had an average of 300% returns on all of our investments. We invest the time, so all you gotta do is invest the money. Thank you. Number 22, Frosty Inc. Hello, I'm Jacob and I am the founder of Frosty Inc. And with my company, I plan to develop a two-in-one attachable cooling and charging device for cell phones that will be used with virtual reality headsets. For those who don't already know, virtual reality is experienced when one wears goggles and is immersed into a world of inanimate objects. However, to be able to do just this, it most of the time requires a cell phone one that often can't support the processing power needed to experience this new virtual world. This often results in only 20 minutes max of continuing usage and could pose a fire hazard at every occurrence. But today, we begin the process of developing a solution to address this problem. Our solution, an attachable device for cell phones that will both cool down its processor to resolve overheating and to act as a battery to maintain longevity of using it with VR. With the money I received today, 
I will use it to construct this proposed system and then patent the device to protect from its duplication. Why would a device like this provide a monetary incentive for investors, one may ask? Well, VR is projected to grow to become a multi-billion dollar industry in just the next short year. <laughs> Therapeutics, number 23. We have a severe problem with the effectiveness of our antibodies. The U.S. alone annually spends $4 billion to treat multi-drug resistant foodborne pathogens such as salmonella and E. coli. Also, farmers and feed producers are suffering from animal health product limitations because of FDA's veterinary feed directive list. Now, if we leave this unchecked, you can expect death rates and economic burden that will exceed the rates of cancer. We desperately need to find a sustainable antimicrobial that can deal with these infections. I'm Ryan Landis, co-founder of Phytos Therapeutics, and our mission is to protect you and your investments from drug resistance. We have developed PhytoX Reinforce, a phytochemical infused nano emulsion that eliminates these infections with no accumulated resistance as seen over time. We are exploring PhytoX Reinforce in agricultural markets <coughs> such as feed and food additives, livestock preventative care, and timber production. Thank you. All right, just some last uh, announcements. So you've heard all 23. Um, again, you've got that link for the audience choice. Uh, you'll have to actually input the name of the team that you want in that audience choice, so that will force you to network. We've just got a number. Go talk to which ones you like, find out their name, learn more. Tom? I forgot. Well, first, how about those pictures, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. God. Before, I, before you go get a, a drink and a, uh, some, some snacks, I just wanted to, there's one picture, one group I want, forgot to thank, and that was the MBA students. Um, all of these, uh, all of these uh, individuals have been, have been leaving the stage here, have been going, they've been taken by an MBA student out into the, uh, the atrium there and or the foyer and getting some real-time feedback on their ideas. And so I want to thank the MBA students on the show here. Raise your hands. Thank you. Have a great break. We'll be back in a little bit. Easy. <laughs> Easy. All right, so in this next section, I'll, I'll dramatically announce the top five. Um, and if you don't make it in the top five, um, we've had many, many, many instances of people not placing at the minute pitch and then coming back and doing more work and getting money in later rounds. Additionally, uh, it was required that you be present for the Audience Choice Award. So don't take your ball and go home. Thank you for laughing again. It's not some. Um, and so, you'll get two minutes, Q&A for three minutes from the judges, and uh, we'll go from there. And then you'll get more time to network and eat and drink. Sound good? All right. Just in numeric order, no uh, percentage order of who had the highest score. The top five teams, and I'll go by number. Number one, easy lock. Number two, sure, let's clap. Number two, George Ray. Number 17, Kinez. Number 19, Turnaway. And number 20, New Ventures. 
All right, if you are one of those teams, come on down. And again, because I have no special order, we're going to go by number again. So number one, you get to be number one again. Come on down. And judges, you can use other scoring sheets to make scores, but again, uh, more for your notes. Are we ready? Audience, are we ready? Yeah. All right. All right. What's up, every What's up, everybody? It's nice to see you again. To, re to recap, we are easy lock. We want to make keys obsolete. We want to make your cards obsolete. Instead, we want to install a facial rec camera so that you can open your doors easily. We think we can do this very cheaply at low cost with only $50 per lock. The lock industry is growing 75% every single year. By 2024, it's going to be a $24 billion dollar business. So one question you might be wondering is, well, how are these guys actually going to develop facial rec technology? Well, both me and my roommate are computer science majors, and we already have a working prototype for the facial rec part. If you're interested, next weekend is Hack UMass. Come on Sunday, and you'll be able to see a live demo of our um, lock. You'll be able to stand right in front of the camera look into it, and see the deadbolt opening right in front of your eyes. Um, once again, we're Easy Lock. My name is Peter. Thank you so much for your time. You don't get to go to the doctor. <laughs> All right, judges, just whoever wants to start. Uh, so you're developing, I guess these are not. So they, you're, they you're, are. You can move them They are. Okay. It just looks cool. So, so they're, you're developing your own facial recognition software. You're not going to use an existing one that's on the market. They have open source machine learning models already um, online. So we're going to use those first. But as we get more funding, we can develop better facial rec models, like the iPhone um, that's coming out soon. Have you done a search to see if there's anything out there? Good question. Them? Good question. So they do have digital locks, no facial rec yet, and they are very expensive. $400 for one of those dial pads. Uh, uh, unfair question, but do you, do you have a clue as to what your margin would be at a $50 sale price? Um, well, it, it depends, I guess, what we... If, uh, we think it'll take $50 to make it. So it depends okay. how much we sell it for. Who do you see as your chief market? I know you talked about the size of the market, but mm -hmm. who are you going to market the product to? Really, at this point, we can market it to anybody because we would be able to install it right on top of a deadbolt. We could also make another version where you could actually integrate it into the door itself. So anyone that has a home, anyone that has a door. <laughs> <laughs> So, you have an IT background. Do you have any access to good engineering support? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be a software engineer next year. My roommate's also going to be a software engineer. Um, and we have some friends on the hardware side as well. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you so much. My name is George Peters, and I'm the co-founder of George Ray. So last fall, I studied in Italy with my buddy, or with my roommate, and then I randomly met this other kid who I paired up with, and we both had this vision to create. We both wanted to start a company and start selling something, and then we both realized we both had a passion for clothing. I tried to start multiple things, and they failed, and I never had the capital to put into the brand, but I wanted to start selling something. I chose clothing because I was in Italy and I was walking around all these store, these high-end stores that I couldn't afford because I had all I could do to afford the pizza and wine that I was drinking later on that night. <laughs> so 
as I traveled all around Europe and did the whole abroad thing, my <coughs> partner and I were sitting in a coffee shop and decided, why don't we name a company George Ray, which is his last name, my first name. So we did so. We came back home and we started with 50 t-shirts. We took out our bank accounts and put it into this company that took advantage of us and charged us way too much for the 50 shirts. So we got those 50 shirts, we brought them back here after wrestling with the guys for a month just to get them here, and then we sold them. And they were super expensive, and we bought them at $20 a unit, we had to sell them to a bunch of college kids for $35 just to make a $15 profit. We finally got those out of our hand, we learned our lesson, and then we went on to our next order. We ordered 50 hats, we sold those immediately because we were able to find a place where we could get them cheaper, where we like did more homework and research and finding how to get the best bang for our buck. Selling hats we figured would be easy because it's a cheaper item, more people can wear it. So we started selling hats. Those sold. Then we got 100 hats. Those sold. And then we went into sweatshirts and hoodies or crewnecks and hoodies. Crewnecks and hoodies were selling but it was often times like people buying 50 hoodies is more expensive than buying 300 hoodies and we couldn't afford to buy 300 hoodies. And then we were trying to use but we sold what we had and got it out of our hands. And then this summer, my friend and I shipped our inventory to LA with no jobs, got out there and just set up, I put all my bank account into it and went for it. All right. What comes next, George? This is what comes next. So I'm trying to sell as much inventory. I just got a whole new order of 400 shirts. I'm trying to sell them all as quick as possible to order more shirts. And then my goal at the end, my goal is to gain investment so that I can put it into online marketing and e-commerce so that, because that's been our most valuable platform of sales. So what's your, what's your current go-to-market strategy? How are you uh, reaching customers? We're reaching customers through, we've been throwing events, renting out clubs and stuff, and I'm taking on the risk that I'm going to hit the bar minimum, which I have no idea if I'm going to hit it. But I've hit it all three t the past three events I've had. So I've been doing events where we like collaborate. We collaborated with Narragansett Brewing Company. Donated every beer that was sold. We don donated a dollar to ALS. And then so we've been using events to kind of create a lifestyle around the brand. And then we've also been just pounding social media and trying to like get it on as many people as possible through photos and videos and getting actual like videos and stuff from those events and then I we, like bought a photo backdrop with our brand and Narragansett's brand and we'd put it up at the event so that when you would walk when we do formal events to make it all look like you're walking on the red carpet and getting your formal picture taking which you're not you're an amherst and I'm, but I'm trying to put it off that way and then I figured that'd be a good way to everyone get a professional photo taken and then they'd put it on their platforms and then their friends would see it so that's been my go-to for the social media. What do you think your discriminator is? Is it your ability to select the right clothing? Is it the price point you're able to get it for? What what what's what's your discriminator in this point? I think that my what I'm trying well what I've come to now is with my latest order I was able to cut down my price point to eight fifty a unit, which I was paying more before. So what my goal is is eventually down the road to outsource to China and contract manufacturers so that I can buy good quality products at the quality of all these shirts that I studied and looked into in LA that are going for 30, 40 bucks and sell them at a lower price point and but keep that quality high to the people like me that want to buy and not take out, spend 50 bucks on a shirt. Are you, are you altering the product at all or are you just the middleman who's marking it up and distributing it or are you doing anything to make it uniquely yours? We're designing everything, we're designing it and then we outsource it to a manufacturer and they, they make it but we, we have a designer, we have, sales, we have a sales guy in LA who's, and at this point what we've been doing is just hustling through giving our, like, empl like our three employees that we have merchandise and our ambassadors merchandise and then commission with, through merchandise on what they sell. Okay. Seventeen 
the blood is the best source of information about the function of body. There are billions of particles in blood that changing a number of those particles can be a sign of a specific problem and cancer. In our research, we received a real blood sample from UMass Medical School and we successfully detected those particles related to pancreatic cancer in those, uh, in those uh, samples. And our result has been published in Journal of Nanotechnology. This technique is unique, cheap, accurate, and easy to use. And we highly recommend it to everyone over 40, which means almost half of the US population. Even right now, if there is any volunteer, we can do these tests. <coughs> Come on, it's easy. It just takes a few, hour, few seconds. OK, we have one, <laughs> two, three. Good, good. We have a short-term and long-term plan for this business. As a short term, we need to improve our kit. Right now, we have a lab version of it. And um, we need to improve it and mass produce it with a, low, with a very low price. And as a long term plan, we want to add more cancers to this detection platform. Technically, it's possible. We just need more resources. Thank you. You exist on campus, are you off campus? <laughs> uh, things like SBIR grants possible? We are looking for any, any help, actually, because this is a, I, we believe that this is a very good um, field that uh, healthcare. Last year, we got the funding from IALS here. Yeah. Uh, it, it was for one year, and we did a quite good job with that one, and now it's just, we get one of the funding that we um, you said that you published. When you published, did you get any inter interest from industry based on what you Actually, we just recently uh, published that paper just maybe three weeks ago. Less than a month. Yeah. yeah. And so, at this point, you haven't been... Yeah. And, and how, did, how, how did you stumble upon your brilliant idea that the, the drug companies haven't found it yet? Was it something unique that you did? Was it a eureka moment? Was it just a different application? or? Um, there is no real detection for pancreatic cancer right now. There are some methods which, is, as I mentioned, there are, you can do the CT scan, but it's not at the earlier stage. You have to, I, I don't know exactly, but it's more, you have to be in the deep stage of the cancer that they can um, detect it, which is almost unfortunately too late for, uh, th there is a 92% of death for this cancer, which is, Usually people that. figure out that they have been had cancer after four and five years, and the, that is not good time for them, so. But, but how do you discover it? What, 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 what it's a blood test? It's yeah, it's just one droplet of blood. There's some protein exists in the blood that we quantify those blood, and there are some other methods that we use with the blood, but they're, they're not using our detection method. We are using some detection method that which has a very, very good accuracy and very, very good, um, very, need very low uh, amount of blood. What are the regulatory hurdles you have to do, pass to get it to market? Um, excuse me? Are there, are there any regulatory hurdles to be able to sell the product to use? Um, so there are, if you want to get the FDA approval, it is possible. But it, again, it takes a lot of time, and we have to do their procedure. And, um, but it's possible, yes. Yeah. So is, uh, is the technology then, with your published paper, is it a proven technology, and now you're working on how to get it out to market, or is it still something where the science is still being worked on? As I mentioned, that, that paper is based on the, um, the lab version of the kit, mm -hmm. which is very costly right now. But we, we are working on technology. We are working on that to improve it. Right now, each, each um, sample takes about $80, $80. but now just, 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 just that kit. Yeah. But now we are but reducing it to about below $10. Yeah. Have, you have you quantified it as re uh, uh, relative to false positives and its accuracy? I I'm just trying to hide. Where are you at this stage? We, yeah, we received the samples, and we accuracy diagnosed all of the sample that we received from the UMass Medical School. So uh, up to now, we just with 100%, we can tell. Uh, did, you, did, you get any did you do anything for false positive testing? Or? Um, for the control sample and the, yeah and yeah we, we, we can just accuracy just uh, distinguish between the three uh, kind of sample that we have. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you.
Christine, turn away. Good evening, everyone. Um, first of all, I'd just like to thank the judges uh, for giving us this opportunity and listening to all these great pitches tonight. I'd also like to thank the audience for uh, taking the time to be here. So, so our product is uh, Turnaway. Uh, I'm the CEO, like I said before. We offer people a 25% match on their savings towards travel. So um, we, we solve three main issues with this uh, solution. First, uh, monitoring prices as they fluctuate. I myself have, am, am an avid traveler, and I would often go to an Expedia or something to find the, uh, the trip that I'd like to go on, and I'd start saving towards it, only to find out later that when I go to book, the prices have either dramatically increased or are no longer available. So we solve that by uh, having people be able to save it to their account, where they can monitor it real time as prices fluctuate. Uh, the second big problem we solve is uh, just affordability. Uh, the number one reason, uh, based on surveys we have done, uh, that people don't spend more on travel is because of the, the cost. It is very expensive for the most part, and uh, most people just can't afford it. Uh, the third uh, main problem that we solve is just getting people to save. Everybody knows how hard it is just to save in general for anything, uh, but if we are giving in an, uh, an incentive structure, people are more likely to take money that they'd otherwise spend on a new iPhone and put it towards travel. Um, so our team consists of uh, myself, who has a background in actuarial mathematics. I also work at a hotel. Um, we have our uh, back-end developer, we have a front-end developer, and we have a director of marketing. So we have a very well-rounded team. We also have a deep network of industry experts in the uh, travel industry, the uh, finance industry, and the business industry as well. Um, so so we need, what we mostly need money for is front-end development at this point. Uh, it's our development, we already have a website and a domain registered, and it's already going pretty smoothly, but we want to get there even faster. Uh, so we can get quickly grab market share. Um, thank you. Uh, so maybe what would be helpful for me is if you could explain maybe more about how the business actually generates income. I understand there's some commission structure, but maybe just a little bit more of that detail. Yeah, of course. Um, so basically the, the main idea is if you have a dollar and yeah, we give you 25% match on that dollar, you have a dollar 25. Uh, using uh, industry standard commissions, which is roughly about 20% conservatively, uh, we'd, get, we'd recuperate that entire match, because we're also getting 20% back of our own 25% match. So 20% of $1.25 is a dollar. So, um, or if you take, take a 20% from $1.25, it's a dollar. Um, yeah, so that's the main structure. Uh, if we can just break even on the matching aspects, we also get, uh, you know, obviously, revenue from interest from uh, all these people saving their money with us, which we would outsource to a bank. I've already talked to the uh, CEO of a credit union about the feasibility of this, um, and he, he liked the idea. Uh, we'd also, our, our main source of revenue though, we're just trying to break even mostly on the matching and the uh, interest, but our main source of revenue would be targeted advertising. The average uh, consumer visits 2.3 search engines before they book. With us, if people are saving towards a specific goal, Ideally, we'd have a 100% conversion rate, so we can uh, sell that information, be like, hey, Jane's looking to go to Fiji and stay at a Hilton. Then we could sell that information to Marriott, who might want to come in and undercut that. So, yeah. Any other questions? Well, I, I, I don't understand the model that well, so um, <clears throat> these people are already looking at deeply discounted prices on the internet. So they're, they're going to the JetBlue site, they're going to Travelocity, they're going to a Verite Kayak, and they're getting deeply discounted prices. Now, are you going to get a 25% commission on top of that dip, deeply discounted price? <clears throat> so like I, like I said, I work at a hotel, and we sell our, our rooms on our website for you know the standard price. This is almost the same exact price as an Expedia or Booking.com. Uh, but when they sell it, we have to give them a 25% commission simply just for getting the customer. So the, 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 the flights that you find on JetBlue are going to be the same exact price as Expedia, just they'd rather you book it through their own website rather than Expedia because Expedia gouges them for 25%. Um, we also offer the solution to the hotels because we're uh, offering people a 25% match, we can, uh, assuming the elasticity of demand for hotel rooms, we can sell... Uh, or cruises or flights, we can sell up to 22.5% more. I've already talked to uh, 
GMs of numerous hotels, and they, would, they said they would easily pick us over any other travel agency because we helped solve their issue of p paying these ridiculous commissions to these third-party booking sites. Are you agnostic to the travel, or are you going to be like selling individual, like a single place, like package trips? Yeah, we would do bundles as well. Yeah. Hi again, everyone. Uh, I'm Alex, New Ventures. And just as a little refresher, my mission is to convert idle patents into executed licenses. So I want to explain a little more about what that means. So professors invent things all the time, usually for their research. And they can file a patent with the university. So the university has this bank of patents. But the thing is, the group controlling the patents doesn't always have the bandwidth or the time to focus on commercializing all the patents. So what happens is these patents end up just sitting there, idly. And this is a problem because patents are very time-sensitive assets. So every second that they sit there unused, that's wasted value. So the goal of New Ventures is to add value to that patent. So what we do is we can form an exclusive option with the university that allows us to license a patent. Then we can do market research and develop the technology to a point where we can take that patent and sub-license it out to other companies who are interested in using the patent to create value. This creates a situation where everyone wins. The company, the university, new ventures, also, more importantly, the end users of the technology, the inventors, and the local economy of Western Mass in general. So I'm working with the UMass Technology Transfer Office. That's the group that controls UMass's patents. And I've compiled a list of all the patents that they have available to license and gone through them. There's some really cool ones, nanoparticles, new polymers, drone control. We're finding applications for these technologies. And the market for university IP deals is about $30 billion per year. And there is a lot of room to grow. So I please ask for your support, and uh, thank you all for listening to me. Has the university identified this as a uh, problem? Yes, I uh, met with Bob McWright, the head of the tech transfer office today, and we talked all about how this will work and the different opportunities that are available. But yeah, there's a lot of sitting ducks that really should be taken advantage of, I think. And can you say a little bit about your background or your partners? Yeah, totally. So I'm a, uh, a biomedical engineering PhD, so this is, I guess, different. But I'm uh, working closely with IELTS. So Peter Reinhardt is the director of IELTS, and he's collaborating close, closely with me on this, as well as some other innovation leaders in IELTS. And uh, yeah, there's some other too, like Bob McRae at the Tech Transfer Office. We have, I definitely cannot do this alone at all. What's, your, what's the value add that you're bringing to these patents? Is it just marketing them uh, to customers, or what's, what exactly is the value creation? Yeah, so a lot of the patents that we have, they, they have intrinsic value in them, but it never gets surfaced because the technology doesn't get developed in a proper way to bring it to market. So um, you've probably heard of Fog Kicker, and that's a pretty good example of how um, a technology needs to be surfaced in the right way. And so what we do is perform market research and assemble teams of subject matter experts and business developers in order to find the best applications for these new patents and simple low-hanging fruit products that could be produced and then sold out, sub-licensed to other companies. And I should add also that to simplify it, I focused on this sub-licensing, but um, it can also create spin-out companies using the patents and there's other companies that do this kind of thing, and they are successful in doing that. And it, it's a really popular thing over in the UK. They do it great. And they do it great in some places here, Stanford, and I mentioned NYU, there's a few others, but uh, there's a lot of room for improvement. 
I would guess there might be some red tape at the universities involved when you try to do this. How, how do you keep your pipeline strong and how, how long do you expect to take some of these patents to market? Absolutely. So one of the most important things I discovered when talking with Peter and Bob is that um, establishing a consistent revenue stream is really important. So one part of that is going to be getting patents that have different timelines. So um, engineering products, which are kind of like electromechanical or simpler things, those can get you an immediate return. Whereas we can have drugs and things for biotech in the long-term pipeline and try to get a cyclical thing going. And I think there's one other part of your question, but what was it? No, that's good. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Give them all a round of applause. All right, so the judges, you do not have an easy choice. Uh, Charlie Johnson is your man. He'll uh, help you through this uh, difficult time. And we will be back in five to ten minutes to let you know who won. When we announce, uh, you come up, I'd love to shake your hand, but we're going to do formal pictures afterwards. Sound good? Yep. All right, we'll start off with the Audience Choice Award for $250. And with apparently 50% of the Audience Choice Award, Easy Lock. <laughs> Good job. All right. Again, in dramatic, we will go with third place for $500. Turn away. Good job. Good job. Good job. Great. All right. For second place, for $750, we have Kanaze. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So first place for $1,000. Goes to Easy Lock again. Great job. Thank you so much. So, again, judges, please stick around. We have great big foam checks to take pictures with. Um, finish the desserts. We wish you all luck on your adventures, and uh, we will see you at our next event. Thank you. Have a good night.